So I'm Jason, uh, senior pastor here with my wife Bev, and a belated Happy New Year to you. We had a wonderful start to the new year last Sunday. Uh, here we had several people giving their testimonies about what God was doing in them, which was wonderful and reminds me, if you ever miss a Sunday, uh, it's all online. It's in YouTube and, and stuff and on our website and social media, and you can catch up there. Um, I'm going to share three things with you today. Um, it's a while since I preached, isn't it? Um, I shared last Sunday about the few weeks I was away and why and my return. I'm not going to repeat that this morning. If you missed that, do listen last week. Yeah, so you can f- find out that story there. I'm going to share three things with you. Vision for the year uh, that I think the Lord's given me to share with you. Um, then an introduction to our new series, which will be short. And we're going to go. We're going into John. This new series called First Love. Um, and we're going to split things up. Because too much of me is sometimes not a good thing, uh, as my wife is always reminding me. <laughs> She'll say things like, people get sick of your voice. So I'm going to share the vision, and we're going to have some worship. We're going to do our worship time that we have in the service, because um, this is like the ministry update piece here. And then we'll come back to God's Word, come back to John 16, and if we have time, and I'll share something from there that, that connects to that. But first, let's pray. So, Lord, we welcome you again near the start of our year. Be with us, be present to us, open your word to us, join us in coffee, friendship, worship, be present. We welcome you. Amen. Vision is vital. Proverbs 29 verse 18 says, without a vision, people perish, or another translation, they cast off restraint. Uh, I like to think it's like entropy. Anyone remember the second law of thermodynamics? No. Some, some of you are nodding. You had flashbacks to school. Something that has energy is the way the universe is wired. Energy decays. Hot things become cold. And it's not just physical things. It's emotionally uh, in our lives. Marriages that were once full of passion and fire can become icy, cold, and sterile. Uh, that's the natural tendency of our fallen universe that energy goes from a high state to a low state. And this is something that the writer in Proverbs noticed, that without vision, without something from God and his connection to us and his energy in our lives, we will decay into coldness and distance from him. Our world will and we will. And something is at stake and still is at stake, or has always been at stake with vision at any time in history, but especially this COVID moment. And we're all sick of hearing the word COVID, aren't we? But there was still something at stake. And without a vision from the Lord, especially in the midst of what is a natural disaster in slow motion, without a vision from the Lord, Scripture tells us the world, the flesh, and the devil... We'll set the agenda for our lives, we'll take God's purposes from us, and we'll cause us to walk into ways where we are very far from him. And so I want to share with you this vision uh, for you is about energy, and it's using the image of fire, um, because it's, uh, scripture talks about the presence of God, the energy of God, the power of God, the presence of God in many ways, and one of them is fire heat and energy and potential and I've been listening to the Lord a lot a lot more Um, in the few weeks I was away I prayed even more and I'm not saying I've prayed a lot to boast about my prayer life but it's almost like I never had a prayer life and now I had one of course I always prayed in the mornings mostly for you Lord bless and I had a little list of people but this past year and three quarters I sat down with the Lord and I said Lord I really don't know how to pray I don't know how to just be with you and not be asking you for something for me or for people in church. And the Lord's led me into prayer. And in the early hours of the morning, spending extended time with him and delighting in him and receiving from him. And what I share from you comes from that place. Um, And I've been saying, Lord, what are you doing with us? And now a sign that what I'm about to share with you, if it is from the Lord... It will bring light and energy and life. Uh, All preachers dare to believe Jesus said that his words were spirit and life. 
And we all dare to believe that as we share things that we think Jesus has given us, that they too would bring, would be by the Spirit and would bring life. And you know those moments when someone shares something, not just a preacher, someone in your small group, and you go from, don't you? Some of you had that moment where your energy is here, and suddenly <gasps> it's here. Anyone had that? <gasps> Whoa. A little bit of the Spirit and God's power comes to you. And you're like, oh. One of the things I talked about last summer was I said that we're in a moment in history. Really, I'm really believing for this. Because, and this is not a lack of faith to say this has been one of the crappiest times in my life. Am I allowed to say that word in church? I always ask if I can. I have never known so much personal loss and anguish and difficulty. And that's not a lack of faith. By the way, it's not faith. I keep saying it. It is not faith not to acknowledge your loss and your pain. That is not Christianity. We worship a saviour who calls us to go to the cross and take our pain there. And scripture again and again says the beginning of processing our pain is acknowledging it before God with one another. And to care for one another and take people to Jesus. Um, and I shared last summer, I said... Uh, I guess, like, pain is too painful to waste, as a, my youth pastor told me many years ago. It's like, Lord, what are you doing? God must be doing something at this time in history. And the best I could come up with is, was, was an image and a story that one day my grandchildren are going to ask me, Granddad, tell me about COVID, yeah? And I, and I will tell them about walking around in the early summer, but it, it was like Christmas, but it was warm because there were no cars on the road, yeah? All that kind of stuff. And I couldn't get toilet paper and all those things, yeah? I'll do all of that and tell them that. But what I want to tell them is I want my grandchildren to be followers of Jesus, and I want my grandchildren to say, tell me, Granddad, what God did. Tell me what God did. And did I take part in it? And I shared that last summer and I said the danger is that we will miss what God is doing because, because of the entropy, because of the atrophy, because of the fatigue and the exhaustion. And that happens in history. God's people go one of two ways. They fall away from the Lord or they are ignited by him and rediscover him. And I said I think that God's giving us an opportunity to catch fire with him and reconnect with him. And does that, does that make sense still? I'm like, I want to be in. And one of the things we said was coming out of our services, I still talk to pastors. I get to them well networked. And some of them can't even put on proper services yet like they used to because so many people have just disappeared and don't want to come back or are exhausted. And something's at stake as we restart gathering as God's people. And we said last summer, do you remember? Are you in? Do you remember that? And we ask you to click in the app, I'm in, at this moment in history. All you had to do was say, I'm in. And we said, how does that begin? And it begins here. So thank you for those of you that have been doing that. But I want to press into that, because I think there is something within this um, and a picture that I shared. I also talked about a backdraft. Any of you remember that image? It's the one I was praying. Um, and if you, uh, you can look this up on Google, there's some amazing YouTube videos of this in action, but you cannot repeat at home because it's too dangerous. But a fire in a building, a house in particular, if all the windows are closed and the doors and there's no oxygen, what happens is that the, the room will become superheated. All the oxygen's used up, but the fire hasn't completely gone out. And the room becomes superheated gets hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter. Firemen know this. They have to be careful because if they open a door and air goes in and oxygen goes in, the superheat of the room ignites the oxygen and can literally cause an explosion. Go on YouTube. You can look at explosions that people create that show this. It's phenomenal. And I really felt like, and I shared with the church... This is the word that God gave me back in March. Do you remember where you were in March when lockdown happened? I remember I was driving down to my wife who was on holiday that didn't turn into a holiday saying, God, what are you doing? And in my prayers, I felt God give me that picture. And I felt God say that he was going to allow this for a while. And for the church and for Christians, it would mean for some people their faith was going to go out. For some people, they were going to get to the point where they would be smoldering Lord, I don't know if I can keep on anymore. I need, I'm, I need oxygen. And other people would be getting red hot, going, I need oxygen, but God, 
you're amazing, yeah? <laughs> and you probably know a variety of people. But that God was going to let the air back into the room. And I think this year, God is opening the windows of heaven and he is already letting the air back into the room. And so I've been praying into that picture and this last bit I want to share with you is what I think God's calling us to this year, that fire is coming. There is this image of fire in the Bible. Hebrews 1 verse 7 In speaking of the angels, he says, he makes his angels spirits and his servants, that's you and I, flames of fire. Fire in the Bible is this image of the presence of God, his power and love and encounter with him. In fact, um, any of you remember we did a series on Revelation? Do you remember that? Some of you were here. I remember we got to, I think Brian did it actually on on the preaching team, the verse, you're neither hot nor cold. Temperature matters to God. He measures our temperature. Are we hot or cold or lukewarm? Temperature. What's your temperature? I don't mean in the hall with the doors open. By the way, other than Games of Thrones, spring is coming. (laughs) It's just a few weeks away. Spring is coming. Um, And the Spirit drew my attention to something as I've been praying and reading through, and I've been reading through the Bible and looking at the church in history and praying and saying, Lord, what are you doing with this? And suddenly I felt like I got my attention on something, that there is a pattern through history, and it goes like this. God's people drift away from him. Something awful happens. Things get even harder. And then what God does is when he delivers his people... The first thing he does with them is he gathers them together to experience him as his people, to be renewed in their relationship with him as his people. See, people went through the Red Sea and escaped Egypt and didn't get to the other side and say, thanks guys, see you next Sunday. They were God's people. The disciples after Pentecost and the Holy Spirit poured out upon them. Peter didn't stand up, preach a sermon, and everyone go, that was really nice, I like that church, I might go back next Sunday. They became a people, renewed in the presence and the power of God. And that, I think, is the top line to this year that I feel the Lord has told me and I see him doing and hear him doing, that he has invited us this year to re-experience him and encounter him afresh. To renew, he wants to renew his relationship with us individually and with us as part of the body of Christ and his people. And that God is inviting us into a great encounter with him. And the image that he keeps bringing to me is that he wants to build a fire. This image of fire keeps coming to me. You say, Jason, what are we doing this year? We're reaching to encounter God and let God build a fire with us. And as you know, one of the wonderful things about a fire is if, if, if there's a fire, people run out to see it, don't they? If my neighbor's house was on fire, I wouldn't stay indoors. Do you know what I'd be doing? I'd be running out going, everybody goes to see a fire. It's human nature. Some of the other things about fire is when a fire is big enough, it can set light to almost anything. Um, One of the things that happens with forest fires when they get out of control, even huge dead trees that might be waterlogged, the temperature of forest fires can get so hot that without even a flame touching the tree next to it, the temperature will cause the tree to spontaneously ignite. That's what happens when fire becomes hot enough. And I've been praying into that and feeling that God wants to do that. He wants to light a fire in you. He wants to light a fire in you so that you're full of his energy and power and connected to him. He wants to put us together as logs in a fire so that our friends and our community would catch fire. Do you know it's one of the ways that evangelism works best in history and is most natural? Not that you're smart enough to answer all your neighbor or friend's questions but you are so full of the power and the fire and the presence of God that people catch light. I've been inspired. I've been reading some stories about moves of God in history to build my faith, 
to build a fire in me. We've got to build fires in ourselves. Scripture says, we're encouraged, uh, David strengthened himself in the Lord. One of the things I've been doing is, Lord, build a fire in me. As I've been reading stories, recent stories, there was a guy, uh, James Alexander Stewart. Can you guess what nationality he was? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Scotsman. Destined to be a, a professional football player, but his mother certainly he was called to be a pastor and, and a missionary, and he was having nothing as a teenager. He didn't want to be a Christian at all. And she prayed for him, people were praying for him, and there was, a, there was an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, this is a few decades ago. And in the middle of a football match, and one that was really important for him being scouted as a professional footballer, the Holy Spirit fell on him, and in the middle of the football pitch, he falls down to his knees, gives his life to Jesus. And he went off and set up one of the biggest missions agencies in the world for the next few decades. Or a more recent story, in the 1990s, uh, I've been listening to some podcasts from a pastor who's dead, but they've taken all his old talks and put them online. And he used to go to churches and they would have evangelistic missions and invite their friends to come in the belief that friends would come to the service and that as God's people they would meet in the run-up to the service and they would be praying, praying that people would encounter God. And they did. And basically it would be like a fire the presence of God would be there, friends would come and they would catch fire. People in the church who weren't really Christians would catch fire and give their lives to Jesus. And he went to one church and he preached and a whole lot of people became Christians. And he was like, oh my goodness, there must have been so much prayer going on in this church. Because uh, that was the thing. He said he wouldn't come unless the church were praying before he came. Well, he found out, one of the elders said to him, I'm really sorry, uh, no one came to the prayer meeting that we had last night, and not many people came to the other prayer meetings. And he was like, how did that, what? I know how God does this. He said, pray, then there's an outpouring of the Spirit. Well, um, a woman came to speak to him who was in the church. And she said, I want to talk, I want to, talk to you, because he was back in the evening service or something. And she said, I became a Christian this morning. She'd been in the church for ages, but never had known Jesus personally. And she said, something happened. The Spirit of God came on me, and she offered her life to Jesus. And she said, can I tell you about my daughter, her 10-year-old daughter? She said, my daughter wasn't here today in the service. She normally would be. He said, oh, why is that? He said, something strange happened last night. She woke up, and she came to see her mum in the morning. She said, mum, I'm so tired, I can't go to church. Do you mind if I don't go to church? And her mum was like, I'm not sure about that. She said, why? She said, God woke me up in the night. Jesus spoke to me. He said, I need you to pray for the church tomorrow. <laughs> and this 10-year-old girl prayed all through the night, remembering the names of all the people she could from the church. And there's this mighty outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Now, when I share that, does that build faith in you? That's the kind of God we serve that will wake up a 10-year-old to get them to pray through the night. Because he wants to start a fire. He looks for those who were on fire. So, the Lord wants to build a fire. How are we going to build a fire here? Well, the Lord has to light it. The Lord has, he's the one that starts the fire, not us. All we can do is, we can, we can do some things to conducive to that. One of the worst ways to light a fire is to get some giant logs and try to set fire to them. If I said to you, we're going to go out tomorrow and lead 100,000 people in the Sutton area to Jesus Christ, you go, that's not happening. That's a log that's too big. You'd need a big fire for that to happen. But it can happen, and it has happened in history. We start small. God's really gracious to us. We just start small. A bit of straw, a bit of kindling. Some of you, I want to encourage you, there's just a, a little spark. That's all that's there. But it's enough to light a fire. And God wants to breathe on it this year. And he wants to ignite it and put that together. This is why the church works. You plus you plus you. You on your own are just a little log. But all together, oh my goodness, what kind of fire can the Lord light? So we're going to look for the Lord to light and build a fire with us. Cooperate with the Holy Spirit. Um, I'm stretching the metaphor here. So uh, there are logs in the fire. You are logs. But I've been praying, and, and I also feel that the Lord has said that there are particular things he has already set fire to in our church. He's lit. And we need to let him breathe on them, and we need to gather around them, and we need to help those, let him build those. 
And here are some of the things that I think I see. One is prayer. Prayer's been growing in our church. More people praying on their own, more people in prayer meetings, more people, we've had a prayer meeting before the Sunday service that Wendy Sullivan's gone to on her own for 25 years. Now has sometimes a dozen of us. God's turned up. Prayer, a little fire lighting, prayer. And prayer, by the way, is the thing that lights all fire. Prayer is, prayer is the thing. If, we, if you only ever want to do one thing to grow as a Christian, pray. Pray, pray, pray. Pray on your own, pray with others. Pray for others. Prayer. Another little thing that's stirring in our church for a fire, the Bible. We had a couple of online things. Brian did something. A bunch of people turned up to that. And I've heard that from people. People have been saying to me, I really want to get... I've, I'm tired of, I, of not reading God's Word and not understanding. I really want to get into God's Word. Anyone here got a little fire in them of excitement about your Bibles that you never had? Anyone got a little fire? Oh, I'm seeing some nods. Some nods. That's right, you can nod. You don't have to put your hand up. It's like, mm, fire of the Bible. Worship. I had a few weeks away and people were saying to me, something's happening here. Someone's actually said to me, it's like the temperature's going up in the room. Someone, the temperature here of encounter with God and worship. Giving. I've been doing this a long time as a pastor. I've had a few people approach me. God has stoked something in them of an, a sheer excitement about giving. Fuel for the fire. Prophecy. We've had... I don't know, is it 29, 30 people who've been meeting for over a year in Zoom and doing prophecy and we've got people coming to meetings to be prophesied over and prayed for? There's another log on the fire growing in our church. Um, lighthouse. We do lots of things in the community. We give to things and you have an opportunity to... There are so many things you can take part in our church. But Lighthouse. For me, as I've been praying, it is a fire that God started in our church. It was a thing that got slowly closed down because of COVID. But as soon as it reopened, there's a fire there. The Holy Spirit is on that. He has birthed that in our church. And Lighthouse remains the fire starter for us in our community. Down at the Old Dolphin Pub. And small groups. Small groups. That during COVID, a lot of us went to because we had nothing else to do. But I've been hearing about our small groups. Our small groups being much more intentional and saying to people, if you want to be here, be here. If you don't, don't. Because we really want to be, on, in other words, on fire. We want to host the presence of God. We want you to come and let go of all the other things and discover Jesus. There's something there that's wonderful. So that's the fire for the year. So let's make this really concrete. What does that mean we're going to do and what will that look like for the year? Less is more. Anybody here with a surfeit of energy at the minute? No. But I tell you what, if God builds a fire under you and you get full of the Holy Spirit this year, you might be surprised at what you'll be able to do for him. That's what we want. We don't want to do a bunch of things that make you more exhausted. We want you to be on fire for him and for him to say, go and start fires there. Less is more. And we are going to do what the Father speaks to us to do. We are not going to, there are going to be so many things this year where it will be our church should, no shoulds, big line through it. We are not doing anything just because it's got a should on it. A should means one or two people do something that no one else wants to do. No shoulds. And not even it would be good to do this. No. There are lots of good things to do. The best is what the Father tells us to do. That is what we will do. Because that's where the fire will be, and that's where the energy will come, and that's when more will explode from it. He opens the windows of heaven, and in the face of our exhaustion. Um, I want to tell you something really practical. This is the, probably the most concrete thing. Um, I feel like the Lord said, we need to move from this place. We've been here long enough. Um, and in particular, I felt like he said to me that we need a new wineskin, was the word. Um, he has served his purposes with us here for 24 years. It's a long time. But we need a new wineskin. I was in a service, walked outside, and just I felt the Lord say, I want you to have a new wineskin. 
And I said, I've been praying into that, Lord, why a new wineskin? It's because this place is used up. In the spirit, this place is used up in terms of what the Lord wants to do. It's been wonderful. It'd be easy to just keep turning up here. But what he's done here is drawing to a close. Because he wants a new wineskin. And I felt him say, Jason, you need somewhere else that I have for you that can contain what I'm about to bring to you as a church. And this isn't it. And there's some really practical things. We need a place that we can open when we want to for what we want to. Including Christmas Eve services. And I'll say it in faith now that we will have a Christmas Eve service in a venue that we can open when we want to to meet Jesus and invite our community to. Yeah, we need that. Our young people need a place. They need a place they can go to at the crazy times young people go to (laughs) where they don't have to go to just DTI. Here's a fire I've been praying. There is something God's doing with young people who've missed out on things the last two years and he's lighting a fire. (laughs) through DTI and as I pray the picture I get is this a space and our young people come to it and the Holy Spirit falls on them just like he does at DTI and they bring their friends and their friends just catch fire because it becomes a great thing to do come to this thing why God's there Boof. nothing cleverer than that freedom and deliverance God wants to bring not just to young people. And also another reason to have a new wineskin is a building is a building. It doesn't matter. God can meet us anywhere and he can meet us if we pitch a tent on flipping Box Hill. But it's about his presence and it's about where he calls us to be with him and where he wants us to gather and worship him. So I'm I'm warning you for this now as best as I know. I, I felt the Lord has also said this. He said, we won't get to where he wants us until we leave here because it's too easy to stay here. Do you remember Abraham? God said, go, and Abraham said, where? God said, we'll find out. And and I think there's some things coming where we're going to have, and you're going to go, what's the point of moving somewhere for six months? Because God has a new wineskin for us, and God is doing something, and we're going to go. We're going to move off, and we're going to pursue God, and we're going to discover what he wants for us, and we're going to let him build a fire in our church that sets fire to our friends and family and community. And we're going to pray, and we're going to offer opportunities to get into the Bible, practice prophecy, focus on lighthouse, focus on evangelism, and introducing our friends to Jesus, and tend our fires. And the last thing is this. Let's make it really practical. How does this... Sorry. I'm overcome as I share that. Not because my daughter's getting married this week. Yes! (laughs) Finally got rid of her. (laughs) And not because they've had a trying time like last year. Because I don't know how to tell you, I am utterly consumed with this. And the love of God and the power of the Holy Spirit And Jesus says, the kingdom of God is at hand. (laughs) And it is. Some of you here, you are carrying the stench of the fire of social media and politics and the crap that's in our world and things that have happened in COVID. And God wants to burn it off of you. Some of you are carrying generational things from your parents and your family that cripple you with insecurity and fear and doubt and God can't get in here and you want to be free from it and he wants to free you. And some of you are sick. God wants to heal your minds and your bodies. So as I share that with you, is anyone finding any life? 
apologize if you think I'm having a breakdown. <laughs> and as best as it is, I'm with my wife, the senior pastor of this church, and that's what I'm going to be doing. And what I wanted to say is, how do you, I'm trying to listen to the Lord as I share with you, some of you are in the place where you want to catch fire. Anyone like that? Yeah. Don't be afraid of that. Some of you think, oh, all my friends are all exhausted. But some of you, are, you're in, the, and we're all in different places. This one's, they're all important, but let's start with that one. Some of you in the place, someone said yes. Who said yes? <laughs> Who would say yes? I want to catch fire. Yeah? I'm already on fire. <laughs> we need you. We need to gather around you. You need to pray for us. And some of you are like, I really want to be on fire, but I feel like I might go out. <laughs> Anyone feeling that one? Oh, there's a lot of hands there. Yeah? And some of you are like, I don't even know if I want to catch fire. I'm so done in. And at best, you might want to want to be on fire. Does that make sense? Some of you are like, I don't like being like this. And I don't have any energy, like your entropy is gone. But there is something in you that says, I would, the only thing I've got is the hope that I might be someone who might want to catch fire. Tell, do that again, if that was you. Nod your head. There you go. That is as much an act of faith and confession of faith as those of you who are on fire and ready to burn for Jesus. Because all of them require God to have been at work in your life to be able to acknowledge those things. Sound good? Yeah. 